So it's the American Tourist Dinner Hour, and look at how pretty much empty this square is during this time of year. It's just like magical to me. Venice is one of the most magical places in Italy, if not the whole world. It's had so many nicknames over the centuries, like La Serenissima, which means the serene one. It now has a little bit of a negative connotation because of the tourist crowds, the tacky tourist shops, and basically becoming an overrun city. But today, I'm gonna give you the formula of how to have the next best trip of your life right here in Venice. Venice can be confusing, stinky, too hot, and full of people. We often get asked, is Venice worth visiting? We maintain that if you arm yourself with good information, book ahead, and plan accordingly, you can prove the haters wrong and have a memorable experience. Today we're featuring the best things to see and experience in Venice so you can make up your own mind whether Venice is overrated or worth the hype. Everything from iconic experiences, UNESCO World Heritage Sites, encountering friendly locals, and trying local foods. Like most places in Italy, Venice is often best experienced first with a local guide. Check out the variety of tours available throughout the city on our website. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to keep up with all our great content on our channel. I'm Angel Castellanos for The Tour Guy, and these are the top things to do right here in Venice. I love a good bookstore, and there is this real funky bookstore here in Venice called Libreria Aqua Alta, and I want to show you inside. Come on. The name Libreria Aqua Alta translates to Library of High Water. This bookstore has been internet famous for years and attracts droves of visitors who love to see the creative way they store their treasured books from the constant risk of flooding in Venice. This library went through Venetian and uses a full-size gondola to hold many of the titles from around the world available for sale. Out back, you'll find a staircase made from books that allows you to see the canal behind the store. Not bad view for a bookstore, right? Cana Reggio is a historic neighborhood in Venice that is often quieter and less crowded than other areas of the city. Its 500-year history is a rich story of one of the world's oldest Jewish quarters. It was so well known in Europe that William Shakespeare set one of his plays, The Merchant of Venice, right here. One great way to learn more about this neighborhood today is to join one of our food tours of this neighborhood. You'll hear stories from a passionate licensed local guide and learn what you should order and try all the delicious local foods. I'm standing outside of Santa Maria Gloriosa dei Frari, otherwise known as the Frari Church, which is the Franciscan church right here in Venice, and it is full of world-class art. So in this church, you get to see art in the way it was meant to be seen, in C2. So this is one of the masterpieces of this church. It's the Assumption of the Virgin by Titian. And when it was unveiled in 1518, it gave the Franciscan friars quite a shock because they weren't used to this use of color, the full-bodied nature of the Virgin and sort of the motion in this painting. They were used to austere art, but this piece would foreshadow the mannerist movement that would come on a little bit later. For the five euro admission charge, you get a Titian, the statue of St. John the Baptist by Florentine great Donatello, a masterpiece by the father of the Venetian Renaissance Bellini, and even a beautiful monument to Titian and Canova. The island of Burano is about 20 minutes away from Murano, and as soon as you arrive, you can immediately notice the colorful houses and that is by design. So the fishermen wanted the colors of the houses to be very bright so they can see Burano in the distance in the lagoon. There's 2,000 people still living on this particular island, so there's not a lot of people here. It's kind of quiet. It's an older population, and there are still 300 lace makers left. The youngest is about 70 years old, and they're thinking about opening up a lace school next year. I certainly hope that happens because it would be a shame if this tradition somehow dies out. One of the main reasons why you would come to Burano is to check out the lace making. And so I'm standing outside of one of the typical galleries that you find here on the main street of Burano. I'm gonna go inside and check out the craftsmanship for myself. So 
So just around the corner from the Frari Church is the Scuola Grandi di San Rocco, which I consider to be the Sistine Chapel of Venice because it houses about 50 paintings from the 16th century legend Tintoretto. The jaw-dropping collection inside the Scuola Grandi di San Rocco contains over 50 paintings. They're all creations by Venetian master Tintoretto, who was one of the most prolific painters of all time. The masterpieces begin on the ground floor and end in the Grand Hall, which contain giant canvases. I'll try not to fall off of this dock here, but I wanted to show you this viewpoint of the Rialto Bridge because there's over 400 bridges here in Venice, but only four cross the Grand Canal. And the first one is the Rialto Bridge. It marks the geographical center of Venice and also the shortest point of the Grand Canal. You know, there's been a bridge here since the 11th century, but very famously in the 16th century, there was a competition to redesign the Rialto Bridge. And what we see today is the result of that competition. The Rialto Bridge takes you to the Rialto neighborhood where there's a fish market and lots of really cool, lively things to see. And I just kind of love this particular viewpoint of the Rialto Bridge. So I made it to Cantina do Espada. And this is where Alessandro recommended I get some chiquetti. And it's not surprising to me because this is one of the historic chiqueterias in the area. So I think uh, it's time for another ombra. What do you say? There were shops of wine where you can have okay. a glass of wine okay. by the, the bell tower of San Mark, which is okay. Campanile. Yeah. But uh, to keep uh, the wine fresh, uh, Oh, okay. According to the shade, that. Uh, right, okay. I made it to the historic fish market here in the Rialto neighborhood of Venice, and you're probably thinking, well, Angel, I'm a tourist. Why would I want to visit a fish market? Well, I'll tell you, this is where you get to rub elbows with local working class Venetians who are here every single day. And more importantly, they're the ones who know where to get the local chiquetti, the local snacks, and fresh seafood. If you're not a fish person or can't stand the smell of fish, then come next door to the fruit market, get yourself some fruits, and now you have a perfect snack to enjoy right next to the canal. Another highlight of the Doge's Palace is the Bridge of Sighs, which connects the palace to its prison. The name comes from the Romantic period and describes the sound prisoners would make after being sentenced to their crimes in the palace. As they were taken over the bridge to the prison, they would get one last glimpse of the outside world while looking out over the lagoon and San Giorgio through very small windows on the bridge. Taking a little day trip today from the main island of Venice to the island of Murano to see the glass blowing factory. There's also the island of Burano, which is known for its lace. These are probably the best sort of day trip options you have from the main island of Venice. The boat ride to Murano in a private boat is only 20 minutes from St. Mark's Square. If you have an appointment set up or on a tour, you'll be met by a representative from the glass blowing factory. They'll escort you in and tell you everything you need to know about the glass making process. Once inside the factory, you'll see one of the most traditional Italian crafts being carried out by artisans and craftsmen as they have for centuries. Cheese with like a spicy chutney on top of it with um, lavender and different herbs. So, so quite good actually. A little bit different than the typical Venetian seafood succhetti, but goes really well with the bitterness of the select spritz. The taste is pretty important, okay? Yeah. It's hard to describe. The taste is like this. Yeah, tastes like this. Yes, justice. And here, as you can see, they have a lot of traditional seafood. This is Ai Santi Bar, and they have some real typical chiquetti. There were some gondolieri in there ordering themselves. So you know, locals definitely eat here. I'm gonna go in and try this. You definitely have to like seafood 
to order this one because you do get a strong seafood taste, but there is a creaminess to this that is really, really, really nice. That one is money. One of the most iconic experiences in Venice can be drifting along the most famous water canals in the world in a traditional gondola. Venetian gondolieri are hardworking professionals who come from a proud tradition since Venice only awards a limited number of licenses per year. It's not a cheap ride since gondolas cost thousands of dollars and it's hard work to maneuver them. If you want to make good memories by having this memorable experience, then be sure to book your gondola ride well in advance. Several of our Venice tours include a gondola ride, so check out our tours because we got you. Just have to see it to believe it. And this is one of the top experiences to do here in Venice, for sure. St. Mark's Square, Venice's largest and most famous piazza, was once an orchard with a canal running through it. It evolved in the 12th century, becoming the heart of the city as Venice flourished. Today, it boasts a UNESCO World Heritage Church, a Renaissance clock tower, and a palace that was once the capital of an empire. The best time to visit St. Mark's Square is early in the morning hours, and another good time is to visit in the early evening. One of my favorite things to do in St. Mark's Square is to sit down for one of the most expensive cups of coffee in all of Italy. The Doge's Palace was built to show the power and wealth of the Republic of Venice that went on for a thousand years. At one point, this was the most powerful half-acre in Europe and built in the Venetian Gothic style. Since 20,000 people visit this attraction daily, I highly recommend booking a ticket or tour well in advance. My tour allowed me to skip the line and showed me the most important things to see, like the giant staircase, the Doge's private apartments, the ground council room with one of the biggest paintings in the world, and of course, the prison. Venice's main church or cathedral is next to the Doge's palace, and it's so unique and extraordinary that it's called a basilica by the Catholic Church. St. Mark's Basilica is an incredibly important site that you can't miss when you're here in Venice. It was built in the 11th century and is a testament to the Byzantine architecture of the time, but also the relationship that Venice had to the east. The remains of St. Mark are right behind me, and there's incredible art all throughout the church. There's so many golden mosaics that they can fill two football fields worth of just the little tiles that you see in the ceiling. So now I'm right next to the sarcophagus where the tomb of St. Mark is, you know, one of the, the gospel writers. And this is pretty incredible because the whole church was built around the relics of St. Mark. And to be this close to somebody who had such an impact on the world and Christianity is uh, pretty incredible, to be honest. Remember, there are a variety of different ticket options for St. Mark's Basilica. My tour allows me to skip the line, comes with a passionate guide, and allows me to get up close to cool things like the altar and admission to the museum, which is upstairs. That concludes my time here in Venice, and I can't think of a more epic way to end my day. I'm Angel Castellanos with The Tour Guy. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you can find our next video. Happy travels. <laughs>